Hey, it's Brian Mudd, and this is my cheat sheet for Friday, June 29th, with a slightly queasy feeling in my stomach, and that is the feeling of what actually happened yesterday with healthcare reform. But let's talk about what it actually means to you. Um, we're going to talk about this from an individual standpoint and a business standpoint. First, you as an individual, what's next as a result of the Affordable Care Act being upheld, but not under the Commerce Clause, under the Taxation Authority of the U.S. Congress, which... By the way, this makes it the largest tax increase in American history. Um, as an individual, things begin to change for you immediately, starting next year. We're getting ready to head into the fall, the time in which uh, next year's insurance plans are brought up for review and decided upon. One of the things you often will decide on is a savings account for health care purposes. You have two leading kinds, HSAs, FAs, FSAs, easy for me to say. Those are the flex savings accounts, right? Currently, the federal cap on flex savings accounts is $5,000, meaning you can tuck away tax-free $5K in a flex account. That gets cut in half starting next year. So you're only able to uh, put in play $2,500 tax-free for your family in this flex savings account. If you're wondering why that happened, remember some of the offsets to try to keep the cost down? That's more taxable income. This $2,500 of income you have that then gets taxed, obviously, at the federal level, which was the motivation behind it. The next piece of it is, beyond the uh, having of your flex account next year, starting in 2014, uh, that is when the tax, re-tax, goes into play. I'll do it for the families. Um, year one, the tax will be $285 per family if you do not have health care insurance or 1% of your income, whatever number is greater. So it's a minimum of 285 and it's unlimited uh, on the upside based upon your income. It goes up every year from there. By 2016, it'll be $2,065 per family or 2.5% of your income, whichever number is greater. And from there, it's indexed to inflation. So it, it will rise every single year in perpetuity. Uh, so the tax portion of it, if you do not have health care insurance, is here by 2014 and increases every single year in perpetuity. Um, as a business person, what does this mean to you? Well, the big thing from this point forward will be 2014. That is the point at which if you have 50 or more full-time employees, you must provide health care insurance to all of them, or you will face the federal taxation at the business level and the business fines, uh, and you will also have restrictions on how much of a health care plan you can provide to your employees. Now, where this gets murky is exactly what all this means because there you have to provide quote affordable health care coverage to your employees but at the same time there are restrictions on how good it can be so there's still a lot to be decided it's kind of like dot frank where they write in the law after the fact that's what's going to be happening and as a result a flash poll yesterday 74 percent of all businesses say that they're not even considering hiring right now they're going to sit on their hands see what happens in november see what happens with health care reform because they can't quantify cost. The single biggest complaint is, and this was a quote from a business executive yesterday on CNBC, I have no idea how much this is going to cost my business. So in this already difficult economy, that level of uncertainty is going to lead to businesses simply not hiring. So there you go. Um, plenty more if you want even more detail on the physical cheat sheet today. Uh, let me cover a couple tech stories real quick. There's a little uh, little time to, to worry here for Apple, perhaps, because two of their top executives, their overall controller of Apple, uh, is leaving, retiring. But the bigger one is that their senior vice president of engineering, Bob Manfield, is retiring. Now, the senior vice president of engineering, this is the guy uh, that when Steve Jobs came up with an idea, went to him and said, now you figure out how to build this thing. Since the beginning of 1999, Mansfield had been with Apple as the top engineering guru. So, if you follow that timeline, this is the guy that was there for the building of the iPod and everything that's happened since, the turnaround of Apple. So, from an engineering standpoint, what will this mean to Apple? Will Apple be able to innovate new products? Will Apple be able to build the ideas that they can come up with and make them as great as they have for the past many years? These are big questions around Apple. By the way, iTunes is going to get a complete overhaul by the end of the year, seamless integration with the cloud, and uh, it's supposed to be a u easier user interface so the experience is consistent from one device to the next on the cloud. 
Um, I got plenty more on my physical cheat sheet today. Um, I'm going to be out next week. I will be on vacation. I hope you have a wonderful 4th of July. Take a deep breath. Come back. We'll hit this thing really hard on July 9th, Monday. See you then.